Welcome to the webinar on how to be a successful stock market investor in as little as 5 to 10 minutes per week without having to study finance, economics, or read charts. My name is Rodney Constable. I'm a former financial services professional, an investor, a trader, and a businessman. Hey, I wanted to pull myself up here for just a couple of seconds so I could say hi to everybody. Thank you so much for being on this webinar. I know you're really going to enjoy it. So uh, stay with me and uh, I'll drop myself back out of the way here so you guys can see the slides. This presentation is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be advice, specific or otherwise. Any illustrations or hypothetical situations presented are for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence and research and consult your own financial experts with any questions. On today's webinar, we're going to be talking about why stock market investing is critical to financial success. We will talk about the pitfalls of the traditional investment process. We will talk about why losses matter, and we're going to drill down on the math behind stock market losses. And I think you're going to find this extremely educational and insightful. We will also talk about how to reduce risk and create a potential win-win situation where you can lose less and make more. So my goal for you today is that you're going to learn valuable financial principles that by the time we get done with this webinar, you will understand the importance of always knowing the current level of risk in the stock market. And by the end of the presentation, you should understand how to control your risk exposure. I want to give you realistic expectations. I do not sell investments. I educate and I share information. I am here to help you become a better and more successful investor. A little bit about my background here. I have decades of financial services experience starting in 1987. I'm a former vice president and regional sales manager for Oppenheimer Funds, the mutual fund company. I'm a former financial advisor and I sold my practice in August of 2016. The securities licenses that I formerly held include the Series 6, 7, 63, and 66 licenses, and I was a fiduciary, so that's kind of a big buzzword going around, but I was a fiduciary. I also held the Life, Accident, and Health Insurance license, and I held the following industry designations. I was an accredited asset management specialist, an accredited investment fiduciary, a chartered mutual fund counselor, a chartered retirement planning counselor, and a chartered retirement plans specialist. So at the peak of my career, I had all four securities licenses. I had my life accident and health license and those five industry designations. I use technical analysis as well as fundamental analysis in my work, and so I consider myself a techno-fundamentalist. I'm a stock and options trader, a mutual fund investor, an ETF trader and investor. I have personally traded millions of dollars of stock and options in my own accounts. I ran millions for my clients, and I sold over $1.5 billion of mutual funds when I was at Oppenheimer Funds, and that is billion with a B. I have worked with over 6,000 individual financial advisors throughout my career. So when I was at Oppenheimer Funds, the financial advisor was my client. So I spent every day, all day, going in, in and out of financial services offices, talking to the financial advisors about their practice, about the economy, about the stock market, and helping them to build portfolios. I have constructed hundreds of portfolios for uh, those advisors' clients, as well as my own clients, I've read hundreds of books on finance, economics, investing, and trading. I have had thousands of hours of finance and economics training. I have easily spent over 10,000 hours studying charts. I am a student of what's called intermarket analysis, which is where you're looking at stocks, bonds, commodities, and currencies, and how they all relate to each other. And I have most recently added real estate uh, to that mix over the last few years. And I've spent the last four decades, ever since I was a teenager, studying wealth and success. Now, with my background out of the way, let's jump into the presentation. There's only three ways to build wealth. You can have a business of your own, you can invest in real estate, or you can invest in the stock market. Let's take a look at each one of these. As far as business ownership, approximately 10% of the U.S. working population at any one point in time is self-employed. That means that 90% of us are workers or employees with no ownership in a company. And business risks are, are high. People don't understand that you need startup capital, you need working capital, and most people underestimate what they're going to need there. You always need industry and business-specific expertise if you're going to succeed. 
You will often work for years without pay when you're starting a business. A lot of people don't think about that. And there's constant competition and disruptive technologies to worry about. And failure risk is high when you own a business. According to U.S. Census information, 70% of businesses with employees fail by year 10. When we turn our attention to real estate, at any one point in time, 64% of families own their own home. That means that 36% of families rent. But when we take a look at who invests in real estate, only 11% of the U.S. population are investors, they're landlords, and own at least one rental property. That means that 89% of US, the U.S. population are non-investors in real estate. In the stock market, now we already know that this is one of only three major ways to build wealth. This is the easiest way for most people to start and build wealth that's in the stock market you can start small for just a few hundred dollars and there's no limit as to how big you can grow your investment accounts in the stock market you build wealth through owning equities now let's take a look at the definition of equity equity means you own a piece of the company either directly so you own stock or indirectly through owning an ETF or a mutual fund so equities can include mutual funds, ETFs, or individual stocks. And there's no right or wrong answer. It doesn't matter. Okay. When we look at equity ownership in the United States, 52% of Americans own equities, but only 14% own individual stocks. So again, most of the equity ownership in the United States comes in the form of mutual funds and ETFs. Equity vehicles, so what you own the, the equity in, can include your 401k, your 403b, your IRA, traditional or Roth, doesn't matter, a SEP IRA, a simple IRA, uh, your non-qualified margin accounts, your trading accounts, okay, so that's the non-retirement accounts. Again, it doesn't matter. You can own e equities in any of these investment accounts. What I want you to do is I want you to change your investing paradigm. Now, let's take a look and let's take a look at the definition of the word paradigm. In science and philosophy, a paradigm is a distinct set of concepts or thought patterns. So what I want you to do is I want you to think differently about investing. All right? I don't want you to save for retirement. Now, don't misunderstand me. Stay with me here. Because saving for retirement is boring. It seems so far away. People always you know, say, I'll get to it later. There's no sense of urgency. And I saw this over and over again in financial services. It's very rare in financial services that we see anybody under the age of 45 that has much of anything save for retirement okay so I want you to change your mindset on this I don't want you to save for retirement right saving for retirement in old age has a negative connotation instead I want you to build wealth I want you to focus on building wealth using retirement plans and using other non-qualified investment accounts it's a difference in mindset okay building wealth I, you know, is, is positive, right? I want you to build wealth so you can retire, so you can do whatever you want, so you have freedom. Building wealth is fun. It has a positive connotation. It gives you options. Building wealth gives you freedom and independence, and even young people want to build wealth. You talk to a young person about saving for retirement, you know, somebody in their teens or 20s or even 30s, they have no interest. But you talk to a teenager or somebody in their 20s about building wealth, and they're all over it. Here's a quote from Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein said the most powerful force in the universe is compound interest. Now, in order to understand what Einstein was talking about, we first need to understand the rule of 72. Now, this is a financial services rule of thumb, and people in finance use this every day, all day long. All right. So the way this works is whatever your rate of return is, you divide that into the number 72. The answer, the sum of that, tells you how long it takes to double your money. So here's an example, and this is the problem, too, with being too conservative. So somebody says, well, I'm a safe investor, right? You're investing in something that maybe pays you 2% a year. Well, here's the problem. It takes 36 years at 2% to double your money, okay? So the rule of 72, 2 goes into 72 36 times, all right? And you can't get wealthy doubling your money every, six, every 36 years, guys. It's just not going to happen, all right? Now, here's something better, but it's still too weak, and that is a 4% investment. Now, in finance, we consider 4% a moderately conservative investment, but here's the problem. 4% 4 still takes 18 years to double your investment. It's, that's still too long to build real wealth. It's better, but it, it's still not good enough, all right? Now, to really 
compound money at a reasonable rate of return where you can build wealth over your lifetime, you need to get your rate of return up to about 8% or more. Okay, So at 8% per year, it only takes nine years to double your money. Eight goes into 72 nine times. So let's take a look at an 8% per year example. Now, this is a one-time investment of $10,000 at 8%. And let's take a look and see what this does over time. So in nine years, your $10,000, again, a one-time investment, would, would turn into $20,000. In 18 years, that's $40,000. And you can see here how this progresses. And after 45 years, and this is the same investment, guys. You didn't put anything else in. It's a $10,000 one-time investment at 8% a year average return. But after 45 years, that $10,000 has turned into $320,000. Let me give you what I call my 8% millionaire recipe. Now, the way this 8% millionaire recipe works is you start with that same $10,000, but you're going to add $10,000 per year every year for a total of 30 years. Okay? And at that same 8% average annual return, you can see that your balance in that account after 30 years would be $1,233,458.68. Now, this is in a 401k or 403b type account. So those are the type of accounts where you can put away this kind of money. All right. This hypothetical situation also excludes taxes. So in your 401k, 403b, those are tax deferred accounts. So this, this type of scenario, it, it's totally doable for most everybody, all right? Even if you make an average $50,000 a year, yes, you're going to have to save 20% of your income, but at 20% of your income on 50000 that's 10000 you do this for your working lifetime, you will be a millionaire, okay? You're going to be wealthier than most, most of the people on the planet by doing this, and you can do this on an average income, all right? So again, this illustration excludes taxes, so it's 401k type account. Now, what happens if you only get 6% a year? And what I want you to understand here is the difference even a couple percentage points make. So this is the same exact scenario, $10,000 a year for 30 years, but instead of getting 8%, we're only getting, going to get 6%. And you can see here that the balance in this account at $848,000, $16.77, that's almost $400,000 lower over that same time frame because you only got 6% a year. What I want you to understand, again, is the difference that just a couple percentage points make. To build wealth, you need to learn to compound money at high single digit to low double digit percentages and then do that over and over and over again throughout your lifetime. Let's take a look at some of the problems with the traditional approach to investing. The traditional approach to investing is where you're studying finance, economics, reading charts. For most people, this is extremely boring. It's hard. It's confusing. It takes years, if not decades, to get any good at it. And then you're still left to individual interpretation. You watch CNBC or some of the other financial uh, programs, they'll have two people right, with opposing viewpoints on the same exact topic. And so you can see that even financial experts don't agree on this stuff. And then there's the economy versus the stock market. Most people get this wrong. Guys, they are not the same thing, okay? The economy and the stock market are not the same thing. You invest in the stock market. You do not invest in the economy. Economic data is lagging data. Stocks lead economic data. So following economic data is like a dog chasing its tail, right? You're just going to go around in circles and not get anywhere. Economic data is past tense. It's already happened. So we have to focus on the stock market, not the economy. And then there's the problem with the old school client level risk management, right? Where they take a look at your age, your risk tolerance, your time horizon. But the problem with this is that it does not factor in the stock market. There's nothing in there to address stock market risk. With tradi traditional buy and hold investing, you're always invested at the same percentage regardless of market action or risk. So if you have a 60-40 or a 70-30 portfolio, right? So 70% equities, 30% bonds or whatever it is, it doesn't matter what the stock market's doing with the traditional buy and hold investment philosophy. You're always invested in that percentage. So I, I think you're going to see throughout this presentation that I, I've, I've got a problem with that. And I think there's a better way to do things. There are two types of stock market risk, systematic and stock specific. Systematic is the system, the whole stock market. 
people say, well, what about diversification? Well, diversification reduces stock-specific risk. However, systematic risk remains. For example, let's look at the S&P 500. There's 500 stocks in the S&P 500, hence the name, and there's 11 major sectors. These are U.S.-based companies, which means they're dollar-denominated. Now, all that means is there's no currency risk, okay? However, over 50% of the earnings from these companies come from overseas. So their sales and earnings are spread throughout the globe. So they're very diversified in that respect. There's very little stock-specific risk in the S&P 500, with the largest holding being Microsoft. And MSFT is the ticker symbol. That's called a ticker symbol, in case you didn't know that. But MSFT is the ticker symbol for Microsoft. And Microsoft makes up a little over 4% of the S&P 500 as of July 2019. Most of the companies in the S&P 500 are large cap companies, meaning large capitalization. They're very, uh, they're very large companies, okay? There are some mid caps in there, so uh, a little bit smaller companies, but most of the companies in the S&P 500 are very large in nature. So as you can see, the S&P 500 is very diversified. However, systematic risk remains. We also have to talk about correlations. Now, let's take a look at the definition of correlation. A mutual relationship or connection between two or more things. Again, that's the definition of correlation. Now, with stock market correlations, what this means is that most equities go in the same direction. So most stocks are going to follow the general direction of the market. The rate of change will vary, but they're going to go in the same general direction. And here's the thing, guys. Correlations increase with rising volatility. Said another way, correlations increase as the stock market falls. The best way I've ever heard it said is, in times of rising volatility, more and more stocks and asset classes become highly correlated. Now, when we understand that rising volatility increases correlations, we can also understand that diversification becomes less effective as correlations increase, and asset allocation becomes less effective as correlations increase. So just when you need these things to really work for you, guess what? They become less effective. Because of this, systematic risk management is critical. It's the key to long-term profitability and success in the stock market. People say, well, what about bonds? Well, let's review how bonds work. First off, bond yields, that's the income off a of bond, whatever that percentage is, that is going to be equal to your bond returns annualized over time. Now, I know that's kind of a convoluted sentence, but what that means is, for instance, if you're getting 2% per year on your bond, that's your yield, your average annual return on that bond is probably going to be about 2% over a period of time, okay? Here's the other thing, though. Bond yields have been trending lower for decades, and I'll show you that here uh, over the next few slides. So if we know that bond yields equal bond returns over time, and bond yields have been trending lower, guess what we can also understand? That the return on bonds is going to continue to fall if this trend continues, and I believe it will, of falling yields. Your return on bonds over time will continue to go lower and lower and lower. Let's take an example of a 10-year treasury bond. Now, this is one of the most common investment vehicles used in the traditional investing approach to offset equity risk. Now, let's use the example of the 10-year Treasury paying 2%. And by the way, that's taxable. And the yield on the, uh, as of the recording of this webinar, the yield on the 10-year Treasury is below 2%. So it's actually worse than this illustration. But just to make it easy, I'm going to use 2%. Okay. So what this means is at a 2% yield, you are paying 50 times earnings, right? 50 times yield because a bond, the earnings on the bond are its yield, right? So you are paying, in this example, 50 times earnings for the U.S. 10-year Treasury. Now, if it was a stock, we really don't use P.E. ratios on bonds, but if it was a stock, that would be a P.E. of 50, a price-to-earnings ratio of 50. The way bonds work is they normally trade in $1,000 increments. So you buy a 10-year Treasury bond at $1,000, and at a 2% yield, that means you're going to make 20 bucks a year. Okay, you're going to get two semi-annual payments because bonds pay their interest in semi-annual payments. So every six months, you would get $10. Huh. On a $1,000 investment, you're going to get $10 every six months for a total of $20 a year for 10 years, and then you'll get your 1000 bucks back. All right. So as you can see here, 
And guess, it, like I said, it's worse than this now. In reality, it's worse than this now. Go out and look at the 10-year Treasury yield. It's, you know, it's, it's under 2%. Okay, at least it is as of the, uh, this recording, and as of recently, it's been below 1.5%. So bonds are expensive, all right? And remember, it takes 36 years to double your money at 2%. Here's a chart from, as you can see on the bottom here, from January 2nd of 1962 through September 20th of 2019. And this came, comes straight from the uh, St. Louis Federal Reserve website. And you can see here that bond yields, if you can see my cursor, you can see that bond yields from the 60s, 70s, and into the early 80s continue to rise. And we peaked somewhere around 16, 16.5% on the 10-year Treasury in about 81, 82. And then bond yields have been falling lower and lower since. And you can see here that we're right at our historic lows ever on the 10-year Treasury. Okay. So you can see what I'm talking about, that bond yields have continued to trend down. And remember, bond yields and bond prices are inverse. So the lower the yields go, the higher the prices are. In other words, the worse the investment is, right? Because you're paying more and more and more for a dollar of earnings. So let's summarize bonds. Bond prices are inflated due to the global reach for yield and global trends. So people around the world, they need to yield, right? They want income. So everybody's buying all these bonds, driving the price up and the yield down. And I could spend a couple hours on this topic, but just understand that bonds are really expensive based on historical measures. Next, let's talk about the problem with losses. And the problem with losses is a math problem, okay? So here you can see that if you lose 10%, it takes 11.11% to get back to even. If you lose 20% on your investment, now it takes 25% to get back to where you were, right? To just to get back to where you were. If you lose 33%, it takes 50% to get back to break even. If you go down 40, it takes over 66. If you lose 50%, it takes 100% to get back to break even. Guys, you know how hard that is? And if you lose 66%, now you have to make 200% back on your investment, either the one you're in or something else, to get your money back. So the problem with losses really is a math problem. And the more you understand this, the better investor you're going to be. And guys, the stock market takes the stairs up and the elevator down. In other words, the stock market goes down a whole lot faster than it goes up. Buy and hold investing and again, we're still talking about some of the problems with the traditional approach to investing in the stock market. But buy and hold investing is where you're fully invested 100% of the time, regardless of market conditions. You're going to experience maximum pain during corrections and downturns, right? Because if you're 60, 70% in equities, you're going to ride that all the way down. And then it's going to take years potentially to get back to where you were before, okay? So modern portfolio theory, based on my decades of experience, my research, and my way of thinking... Modern portfolio theory is old, it's archaic, and it's antiquated. With the traditional investment process, you're going to experience massive losses during downturns. It takes years to get back to your previous high watermark. It ends in frustration, aggravation, and a loss of faith in investing and the system. And I have seen this over and over again with investors. And now we have a newer market challenge called algorithms. Okay, these are computer programs. And algorithms now control most of the market trading. Most of the daily volume in the stock market is now controlled by computer programs. And price fluctuations are violent, right? You've seen that as of late. And what this also means then, if computer programs are doing a lot of the trading, doing most of the trading now, that fundamentals are less influential, at least in the short term. So... With all of these problems, all of these challenges, what's the solution? What if you could easily know and understand the current level of risk in the U.S. stock market? Think of risk levels like the ocean's tide. What if you could understand the direction of the tide and adjust your risk, your equity exposure, based on the tide? And what if it was as simple as green, yellow, red, like a traffic light? Green means go, yellow means caution, red means stop. Introducing simple market signals. If you understand the basic meaning of green, yellow, and red, you can succeed with simple market signals. Yes, it is that easy. What is simple market signals? 
Simple Market Signals is a market-based proprietary model that measures U.S. stock market risk, systematic risk, and then generates risk-based color-coded signals based on that level of risk. Simple Market Signals is like risk radar for the U.S. stock market. High or rising risk usually means the market is going to fall. Low or falling risk usually means the market will start to rise. The signals are generated weekly on the overall U.S. stock market and all 11 major sectors of the S&P 500. Let me give you a little bit of background on Simple Market Signals. This is a culmination of my life's work in the financial markets and trading. This took me over 20 years to develop, and like most things in life, this came together uh, piece by piece, right? So, you know, most things, if you're working on them, you, you get one piece, and then you add something else to it, and then you add something else to it, and that's how this happened. I created this for my own personal trading and investing, all right? I wanted something that gave me an advantage, something that gave me clarity, something that gave me insight, and something that was repeatable. I needed a consistent system for determining market risk, and I couldn't find anything out there. That's why I had to develop this. So even with my background, guys, I needed this, okay? And so that's why I developed that. I had no idea initially about creating a business around this, but once I had this, once I started using it, I'm like, man, there's a lot of people that could benefit from this, and that's when I put together the infrastructure to bring this thing to market. So Simple Market Signals is simple, it's easy, it's effective, and guys, it's very affordable. So who is Simple Market Signals for? It's for novice investors, it's for experienced investors, it's for industry professionals. I have financial advisors that are using Simple Market Signals to help run their practice, all right? It's for anybody that has a, an intermediate to long-term focus. This isn't for day traders. It might help them a little bit, but it's, it's really not going to help day traders that much, okay? So it's for anybody, anybody that has an intermediate to long-term investment focus and people that want to employ both offense and defense with respect to their U.S. equity investments. Simple Market Signals is for people who are tired of losing money, tired of not making money in the markets. The, it's, it's for people who are tired of not understanding the markets, right? And it's for people who believe that there has to be a better way. And it's for people who want an edge, want an advantage with respect to their trading and investing. It works with any type of an account. So it'll work with your 401k, your 403b, your IRAs, your other equity-based retirement plans like your SEP, Simple, whatever you may have at work. And, of course, it's going to work in your non-qualified accounts, your trading accounts, okay, your other non-retirement non accounts. It works with any type of an investment vehicle. So it'll help you with your mutual funds, your ETFs, your stocks, and it will even help in options trading. Now, let's have a little fun with this, okay? Who is this not for? So if you're so rich that money doesn't matter to you, well, then this probably isn't going to help you too much, right? If somebody believes that the government will take care of them, well, they're probably not going to benefit much from simple market signals. If somebody believes that the economy drives the stock market, well, it, it's not going to help them there, right? If people don't invest in U.S. equities or they only invest in commodities like gold, silver, copper, oil, corn, soybeans, it's not going to help them. And if they only invest in art, automobiles, collectibles, diamonds, again, not going to help them there, right? And if somebody doesn't care if they make or lose money, they're not, they don't need simple market signals. And if they're not interested in building wealth, well, I mean, who's not interested in building wealth, right? But if somebody's not interested in building wealth, simple market signals is not for them. And it's also not for people that believe in the status quo. If they want to continue to invest the way investing has always been done, simple market signals will not help them, okay? But Simple Market Signals is current, it's market-based, it's based on a proprietary multi-factor model. It's not based on opinions, forecast, guesswork, or lagging economic data. Let's take a look at the signals and do a signal overview here. So again, the signals are green, yellow, red. So when the signal is green, what this means is that risk in U.S. equities is low according to our proprietary model. Your biggest market gains are generally made when the signal is green. And when the signal is green, this is your best opportunity for profits in U.S. equities. And what this means within the model is that all internal measures within our proprietary model are in agreement. So they're all saying the same thing, that risk is low, 
and and that's why the signal is green. And this is also your best risk reward ratio signal. Okay, so when the signal is green, that is by far your best risk reward ratio signal. When the signal turns yellow, just like a stoplight, this means caution. All right. Now, in a yellow signal, what you can probably expect is sideways to slightly lower or higher price action within the overall market. Within the model, this means that several indicators in the model are showing signs of weakness. But there's some of the internal measures in the proprietary model are in disagreement. So some of them are some of the indicators in the model are more sensitive than others, right? So the the more sensitive indicators will will start to roll over first, hence the signal will go to yellow, but some of the uh, longer trend signals still have not rolled over yet. Okay, so within the model and the market, when the signal is yellow, this means there uh, there's uncertainty, there's lack of conviction, both in the markets and in the model. Now, this is possibly when the signal is yellow, there it's possibly the beginning of a correction or downturn. It doesn't mean that the signal will go red, but generally. If it does, it, you know, you start off with a green signal, then it turns yellow, and then it turns red. Now, sometimes it'll go green, yellow, green, so it'll go back to green after being yellow. But, uh, but this is that transition period where the market's going to be si sideways to slightly up or down. And again, the signal, I want to, I want you to understand. I want you to have realistic expectations. The signal will not pick the exact top, but when the market is topping and rolling over. Uh, the signal will be green, and then as the market starts to roll over, the signal will turn yellow, okay? But it will not pick the exact top. When the signal is red, what this means is that risk is high in U.S. equities, according to our proprietary model. All internal measures in our model are in agreement. So just like when the signal is green, right, all everything's go when it's green, well, when it's red, it means that everything in the model is saying the same thing, and what you can ex expect is that the worst market declines, including bear markets, are going to happen when the signal is red. This is the most time, dangerous time and dangerous conditions to own equities in uh, when the you know in the market when the signal is is red. This is by far the worst risk reward ratio signal. And just so you understand, the markets will bottom and start to rise when the signal is still red. Again, the signal will not pick the exact bottom. Okay, so I just want you to have realistic expectations of how this works. It's based on the philosophy, and it's a trading philosophy, of cut your losers and let your winners run. And guys, to make money in the markets going forward, you have to embrace this philosophy. Cut your losers, let your winners run. So how well do simple market signals work? Well, let's start off by looking at a buy and hold philosophy from 1999 through 2014. And what we can see here, and we're looking at a chart of the S&P 500, and so we're going to start off in the uh, left-hand side of the chart there in 1999, and you can see the market start to rise up, and then we hit this blue line, which, by the way, if you look over to the right, you can see the scale. That's 1,500 on the S&P 500, so that's 1,500 is the price level. And you can see here we hit 1,500 for the first time in the S&P 500 in the first quarter of uh, right around the end of the first quarter, beginning of the, of the second quarter, in 2000 and kind of played around in that area for a little while but it didn't hold and then we went into that 2000 through 02 downturn beginning of 03 is when we finally bottomed and then the market started to rise again and it took years to get back to where we were and you can see here from 2000 through 07 that there was no money to be made underneath that 1500 level right if somebody got in right here they didn't make, and they were a buy and hold investor, they made absolutely no money, and it took years to get back to break even. Same exact thing happened during this time frame. 07, the markets peaked, started to roll over at the tail end of 07, fell all the way through 08, bottomed at the, uh, in the during the first quarter, uh, early second quarter of 09, and then again came back up, and finally we hit that 1500 level again in January of 2013. So what I hope you're taking away from this is that it took, for, for a total of 12 years and 10 months, almost 13 years, guys, the markets went nowhere. We were trapped underneath that 1500 1550 price level. You can see it over here to the right. Finally, in January, February of 2013, the markets finally broke above that 1500 1550 level 
and started to rise. Okay, so this is the problem with the buy and hold investment philosophy. Buy and hold investing over longer periods of time, you, you can lose an entire decade or more where you make absolutely no money. Okay, so now let's drill down on that 2000 through 03 time frame using simple market signals. Now understand that this is back testing, okay, because I didn't have the model completed then, all right? The model finally came together in 2017. So I want you to understand this is back testing, but in back testing this, this is what would have happened, all right? Simple market signals would have been red for the majority of this downturn. All right, so now let's drill down on this and see what, what the numbers look like. So the signal would have went red on the S&P 500 at 1450, at the 1450 level, in September of 2000. And then the final signal, the final green signal, would have went green, right? The signal would have went green at 890 on the S&P 500 in April of 2003. So there was a total of 560 S&P 500 points in the red zone. That is a 38.62% loss. Now, if you lose 38.62%, it takes 62.92% to get back to break even. And again, you know that that takes years. We've, saw, we, we've seen that, okay? It took years to just get back to 1,500, 1,550. So this, again, is the problem with losses, all right? So again, let's take a look at that same chart. So you can see here that during this time frame, the, red, the signal would have been red for the majority of that downturn. Now, let's really zero in here. Let's focus in on this time frame because I want you to understand that there's what's called whipsaws that happen where the market tries to rally and the rally attempt fails. So that initial signal at that 1450 level was here. And you can see here, hopefully you can see where my cursor is. But as we fell down, the market tries to rally here and it didn't hold all right the signal would have went the, the signal would have went green there and then a week later the the rally attempt failed and we got a red signal okay and then the market fell again the market tried to rally we got a green signal there if you can see the cursor a few weeks later the rally attempt failed we got a red signal all right so the the key here and the way i use this is I'm not invested when the signals, I'm in cash when the signal is red. Okay, that's the way I design this. Now, if you're going to employ this, you have to figure out how you want to use it. But I would encourage you to at least minimize your equity exposure during the red, uh, the red signals. But assuming, like the way I use it, that uh, I'm in cash when, it's, when the signal's red and then I get invested when the signal is green, you would, have, you would take some small losses here, right? You get in the market, and then a few weeks later, it fails. And it may fail at a slightly lower level, right? The red signal comes out at a slightly lower level than what the green signal was. So you may take a small loss there. Again, the same thing happens here. It goes green, goes red. And then you had another one of these whipsaws. Okay, these are called whipsaws, where you, you go, get in, and again, the rally attempt fails. This is just the way investing and trading works, okay? Then the final signal, the green signal, where the market finally went green and held, uh, happened here. And then you can see that we, we took off and, and to the right of the chart there, uh, we started to climb out. All right. But this is what would have happened. Again, this is a hypothetical. I went back and, and did the back testing on this, but I just want you to understand what I meant by the signal would have been red during the majority of the downturn, but there was a few uh, failed rally attempts where the signal would have went green, and you potentially could have gotten in, and then within a week or two or so, you know, maybe a month later, you would have had to get back out and perhaps taken a small loss. The point is, don't take big losses, okay? If you're going to be a successful investor and trader, you cannot take big losses. Take small losses, don't take big losses. Now, let's do the same thing and take a look at that two, two, 2007 through 2009 time frame using simple market signals. Again, we can see here that the signal would have been red. The weekly signal would have been red for the majority of this downturn. And the exact numbers on this, the signal would have went red at 1500 on the S&P in November of 07. And then the signal would have went green on the S&P 500 at 875 in April of 09. That means there was 625 S&P 500 points in the red zone. That is a 41.67% loss. If you lose 41.67%, it takes 71.43% gain to get back to break even. Guys, do you know how hard it is to make 
that takes years. It's really, really hard. Okay. So again, cut your losers, let your winners run, cut your losses to as small as, keep your losses as small as possible. If you want to be a successful investor, if you want to make money over time in the stock market, the whole key is to minimize your losses, maximize your gains. Okay. So again, we're looking at this same chart so we can see the signal would have went red here and then would have went green there. Now again, let's kind of put it under the microscope, so to speak, and take a look. During this period of time, there was only one whipsaw, okay? And, and doing the back testing on this, uh, the market fell so quickly during that 07 through 09 time frame that there was only one rally attempt that would have triggered a green signal and then you can see here a week later these are each one of these bars these candlesticks is what these are called is a week okay it's representative of a week in the S&P 500 so this week the signal went green and then this week the signal would have went red and it would have stayed red through that entire time period and then finally here you can see in the lower right hand corner of the chart where the two bars uh, two lines intersect the signal would have went green there okay so Again, that's using simple market signals, and that's what would happen during that 2007 through 09 time frame. Now, let's take a look at something a little bit more recent. And uh, again, I was using the uh, the model uh, during this time frame. I've had it up and running since 2017. And uh, so now let's take a look at the calendar year 2018, which was, again, another uh, real tough year. But what I did here, just to make it easier to understand and see, is uh, as I... I just separated this out green and then the yellow and reds are together. I didn't separate those out, but just to give you an idea how this would have worked in uh, for you in, in 2018, you can see here that the signal was green and then went yellow here. And then this period here between the end of January uh, through the beginning of June of 2018, the signal was either yellow or red. And then we got a, a kind of a short signal here just for uh, a short period of time, a few weeks where the signal was green in June, but the rally attempt failed and went back into yellow. It never did go completely green. So you can see here that sometimes it goes, uh, or I'm sorry, it didn't go completely red. But you can see here that sometimes the signal will go green, yellow, green again. And then we got a green signal, okay? And then you can see that uh, in October of 2018, uh, about the uh, first week or so of October, the signal again went uh, yellow and then red. And so if you go and look up the returns for the calendar year 2018, you're going to find the market was down over 6%. But you can see here that if someone was invested just during the green periods, okay, you would have only been invested about four months of the year, but you would have had a positive return. So the key to the way I use simple market signals, now you'll have to make up your own mind how you want to employ this, but the way I use it is I'm invested during the green periods, I'm in cash during the yellow and red periods, okay? But you can see here that you would have made money here, you would have made money during this green period, and then if you just would have avoided the yellow and reds, you would have actually made money in 2018 where people that were fully invested all year long uh, actually lost money okay but there are times like this green period here where you could get in and out at the uh, at around the same price maybe even lose a little bit uh, and then the same thing on the yellows you could sell out if indeed you sold out when the signal turned yellow like I do and then you could get back in when the signal turned green and you might buy back in at a slightly higher price that is a reality of using this system that is a reality of and really, that's just the price you have to pay to cut your losses and let your winners run. There's going to be times where you're going to get these short signals where you might have to buy in at a slightly higher price, okay? Or you buy in and then you, you know, sell within a few days or a few weeks at a slightly lower price. That is just the reality of investing in this manner, all right? So let's summarize these charts. If you were to reduce or eliminate your equity exposure during the red signals, and then increase and maximize your equity exposure during the green signals, you would potentially lose less and potentially make more. So simple market signals helps you know when to play offense and defense, and it gives you the potential to lose less and make more. I can't guarantee that that's going to be your experience, but simple market signals will at least give you the potential to lose less and make more. Simple market signals will help you in both up and down markets. 
So let's take a look at what others are saying about simple market signals. We're going to start off with a gentleman. Uh, just going to use his uh, his initials uh, HD. He's been a financial advisor in the Phoenix, Arizona area for over 20 years. HD says, I've been receiving simple market signals for some time now. I have found the information insightful. When the model went red in the last quarter, he wrote this a little while ago, it gave an excellent early warning. This model is a great tool that assists me in the protection of profits and the rebalancing of portfolios. So you can see here that how a financial advisor with over 20 years experience, a very successful guy, how he benefits from using simple market signals in his practice. Okay, But even if you're not a financial advisor, this stuff is so easy, guys. So whether you're investing on your own or working with a financial advisor or you are a financial advisor, this will work for you. Now let's take a look at what Paul has to say about simple market signals. Paul is a university professor and a professional musician in the Grand Rapids, Michigan area. Paul says, simple market signals keeps me in the loop about what's happening in the market so I have a better understanding about what is happening with my money and its growth. It's a very affordable and easy way to stay informed. And lastly, we have JC. JC is a former financial advisor and a business owner in the Detroit, Michigan area. JC says, simple market signals is a great investment tool, easy to understand and use to make investment decisions. How can you get simple market signals? You will want to subscribe. As a subscriber, you will receive a weekly emailed newsletter that includes the weekly proprietary signal on the overall U.S. stock market. You will also receive weekly signals on all 11 major sectors of the S&P 500, and you will receive weekly market commentary, which is both valuable and educational and you will receive special midweek updates when warranted. The weekly emailed newsletter generally goes out on Saturdays, but anytime during the weekend it could go out. But if there is a midweek change in the major signals, I will send out a special midweek update so you won't have to wait until the weekend to find out that the signal has changed. But guys, there's more. What if you could also easily know and understand the current direction of the trend in the U.S. stock market. Introducing the early bird indicator. The early bird indicator is a trend indicator that works side by side with simple market signals weekly signals. The early bird indicator is a weekly positive negative signal indicating the current direction of the trend in the U.S. stock market. Let me give you a little history on the early bird indicator. This took me over seven years of research to figure this thing out. I tested numerous time frames, and the end result is that the early bird indicator stays positive during the bulk of most uptrends and is negative during the bulk of most downtrends. And as the old timers on Wall Street say, let the trend be your friend and don't fight the trend. So what if you could know and easily understand both the current level of risk and the direction of the trend in the US stock market. Do you think that would help you with your investing and your trading? Absolutely it would. Now you'll have access to two powerful forces, simple market signals risk indicator and the early bird indicator which is a trend indicator. But you are in total control of the implementation of all signals. We don't do the implementation of anything for you. We don't run money, okay? We send you the information. You have to decide how you're going to employ this information. You are in total control of the implementation of all signals. As a subscriber, you will get the weekly proprietary signal on the overall U.S. stock market that is easily a $97 per month value. I could sell that signal by itself for at least $97 a month and still provide a ton of value to the end user. You will also receive the weekly signals on all 11 major sectors of the S&P 500. Again, I could sell those signals for at least $97 per month just on those 11 signals. You will also receive the weekly positive negative signal on the early bird indicator. Again, the early bird indicator can be sold by itself for $97 a month. All right. You will also receive the weekly market commentary, which is both valuable and very educational. 
And guys, that's priceless. You're going to continue to learn week after week after week. You're going to continue to learn more and more about the market and about investing and trading. The total retail value of this is $291 or more per month. And I should be charging at least $29.99 per month for this. But I'm not even going to charge you $29.99 per month. You get everything for just $19.95 per month. That's less than 67 cents per day. A Simple Market Signal subscription is just $19.95 per month. It's billed monthly on your credit card. There's no contracts. You can cancel any time. And your first two weeks are free. Sign up is quick and easy. You just go to simplemarketsignals.com. And I'll show you how easy it is to, uh, to sign up. Uh, first thing I want you to do is you have to accept the cookies. Okay, it's standard these days. So you have to accept the cookies. Okay, so once you reach the home page and you've accepted the cookies, please notice that due to international compliance regulations, you must be at least 18 years old and a citizen of the United States of America who is currently living in the U.S. in order to use this website or our services. Again, that's just due to international compliance regulations. So click here to get started. And this will take you to the product page. Takes, uh, depending on the speed of your connection, takes just a few seconds to load up. And again, this just reiterates uh, the product there and what you're going to get. Then you click on the Sign Up Now button, and that will take you to the checkout page. And once you're on the checkout page, fill in your first and last name. The company name is optional. And then your uh, street address, uh, the billing address, of course, for your credit card. Uh, so if it's a P.O. box, put that in there. Um, and then use your, you know, of course, town, state, zip, your phone, your email. Make sure the email's in there because, of course, it is an emailed newsletter. So we have to have that. And then make sure this box is still checked because that's how your email gets into the system. If that's unchecked, your email will not get into the system, okay? Um, and then double check, make sure you've got one subscription. Make sure you haven't clicked that a couple times, because uh, if, it, if it says two, you're going to get two subscriptions. So make sure that box just, or that number says one. Make sure your recurring total is $19.95 per month. And again, your first two weeks are going to be free. So you can see that uh, whatever the date is that you're subscribing, uh, your first renewal is going to be two weeks after that date, okay? And then you're going to put in your credit card number, expiration date, and the three-digit code. Go down here and uh, make sure you uh, read the privacy policy and then the terms and conditions. You would have to uh, read and check that box and then hit the Sign Up Now button, and it is that simple to subscribe. So the whole process should probably take you five minutes or so. It's that easy. At Simple Market Signals, our goal is to make investing in the stock market less confusing, less intimidating, more efficient, and more profitable for the masses. If not Simple Market Signals, then what? If you don't subscribe to Simple Market Signals, how will you know the risk level in the market at any one point in time? How will you know the direction of the trend? How will you manage your risk? Simple Market Signals is an intelligent way to manage risk in today's market environment. And just ask yourself, do you think you're going to have more success investing with or without Simple Market Signals Weekly Signals and the Early Bird Indicator Weekly Trend Signal? More success with or without this information. What's your risk? Guys, from my perspective, your risk is in not subscribing, right? Your risk is in not knowing the current level of risk in the market at any given point in time. Your risk is in not knowing the direction of the trend. And if all this did was to help you reduce your losses in the next big downturn, wouldn't it be worth it? You've seen the math behind that. You, you know that if you lose 33%, it takes 50% to get back to break even. Okay? So if all this did, and it's going to do so much more for you than that, but if all this did, was to help you reduce your losses in the next big downturn. Wouldn't it be worth it? So we started off with this slide. How to be a successful stock market investor in as little as 5 to 10 minutes per week without having to study finance, economics, or read charts. And I think you can see that I didn't oversell this. It's going to take you 5 to 10 minutes per week to read the email, 
and then make up your mind whether you want or need to make any changes to your investments based on the signal. And guys, it, it can be that easy, okay? It can really be that easy for you to be a successful investor in the U.S. stock market. Again, Simple Market Signal subscription, it's $19.95 per month. It's billed monthly on your credit card. There's no contracts. You can cancel any time, and I'm going to give you your first two weeks free. Let's recap what you're going to get. You will receive the weekly emailed newsletter, which includes the weekly proprietary signal on the overall U.S. stock market. You will also receive the weekly signals on all 11 major sectors of the S&P 500. You will also receive the weekly positive negative signal for the early bird indicator, which again is the trend indicator. You will also receive weekly market commentary, which is both valuable and very educational. You will also receive special midweek updates when warranted. So if there's a major signal change in the middle of the week, you will be notified. You won't have to wait until the weekend when the newsletter goes out to, uh, to know that. You will get those special midweek updates. And you're going to get all of this for just $19.95 per month. That's less than $0.67 cents per day. What else are you going to do for less than $0.67 cents per day that could have this type of an impact on your financial future. And all you have to do is go out to simplemarketsignals.com and subscribe. Thank you for being on this webinar with me. I look forward to helping you succeed.